In the Netflix hit The Crown, there are a few facts that are left out of Princess Diana's story, and some of them are too strange to not be talked about. Here are some of the strangest facts about Princess Diana. As The Crown alluded to in season 4, Princess Diana's older sister, Sarah Spencer, did actually date Prince Charles several years before Diana caught his attention. According to Sarah Bradford, author of Diana, Finally the Complete Story, the couple seemed like a good match at the time. Prince Charles enjoyed Sarah's sparkiness and irreverent wit, and they made each other laugh. The relationship is said to have fizzled out after Sarah gave a rather shocking interview in which she claimed she wouldn't marry the royal. However, it was thanks to this relationship that Diana and Charles first crossed paths. According to the Daily Times, Diana first met the prince in a ploughed field in 1977 when she was just 16. Princess Diana's marriage to Prince Charles wasn't her family's first brush with the royal family. In fact, Diana's maternal grandmother, Lady Ruth Fermoy, worked as a lady-in-waiting to the Queen Mother, Charles's grandmother. According to Radio Times, Lady Fermoy began working for the royal family in 1956 and, over the years, became a close friend of the Queen Mother. In his famous biography of Diana, Diana, Her True Story in Her Own Words, Andrew Morton revealed that Lady Fermoy's experience with the royals led her to caution her granddaughter about joining the family, telling her, You must understand that their sense of humour and lifestyle are very different, and I don't think it will suit you. I hope I don't need to tell you how fortunate you are to have been invited here, how unique an opportunity this is. Once the marriage began to crumble, Lady Fermoy reportedly took Charles's side. As Robert Runcie told The Times in 1996, she was totally and wholly a Charles person because she's seen him grow up, loved him like all the women at court do, and regarded Diana as an actress, a schemer. It must have been difficult for Diana to feel that even her own grandmother wasn't an ally. Before she became Princess Diana, she was simply Diana Spencer, a relatively normal, albeit privileged, British schoolgirl. In fact, she even won a pretty funny award as a kid. Diana is said to have won an at-school award for taking good care of her guinea pig. As W reported, the princess-to-be was pretty obsessed with guinea pigs as a kid. She participated in several pet shows at Sandringham, her childhood home. In 1972, she reportedly won both first and second prize. Her guinea pig, Peanuts, also came with her to boarding school. She was even named Head of Pets Corner, where the students' pets lived. While Diana's guinea pig obsession may seem a little strange, it was actually an early sign of her famously caring, empathetic nature. Before Diana married into the royal family, she had a surprisingly normal job. You may be surprised to learn that the princess actually worked at a nursery school in London as a part-time kindergarten teacher. She worked at the school until her engagement to Prince Charles, and it was during this period that she began to be hounded by the press. Have you any comment to make about that? Maybe not. No comment at all. In the 2017 documentary, The Diana Story, photographer Arthur Edwards explained how he searched a few different nurseries trying to find Diana. When he found the correct school, she came out for a quick photo with a few children. He recalled, she posed and halfway through taking the photographs, the sun came out. While most fans of Princess Diana probably know that she and Prince Charles ended up being seriously mismatched, they may not realize just how significant their age gap was. When they became engaged, he was 32, while she was only 19. Looking back, it's clear that the couple's age difference meant they came from vastly different worlds. As an old employee of the royal household told The Sun, they didn't know each other, and at 19, you don't know your mind. They had nothing in common, and as time went by, that really showed. However, royal correspondent Stephen Bates told Time that the age gap was rarely questioned at the time of their engagement. But as Reader's Digest reported, people eventually accepted that the age gap was one of the main reasons that the marriage ultimately failed. And I suppose in love. Of course. <laughs> Whatever in love means. <laughs> well, you can put your own interpretation. Several infamous moments in Princess Diana's history didn't make it into the crown. One of these moments was her spur-of-the-moment dance with John Travolta. In 1985, during the royal couple's trip to the United States, they were invited to a gala dinner at the White House. Amongst the other guests were some of Hollywood's biggest stars, including Travolta. As Paul Burrell, Diana's butler at the time, wrote in The Way We Were, Remembering Diana, the princess hadn't actually been planning on dancing with Travolta. In fact, she'd been hoping to be 
be partnered with Mikhail Baryshnikov, the famous ballet dancer. However, Burrell wrote that Nancy and Reagan set up the press to take a picture of her dancing with John Travolta. As Travolta reportedly recalled later, Diana had actually tried to lead the dance. Well, that's not going to happen. I've got to go back to my school days of learning ballroom dancing and show that I can lead her. Apparently, Travolta and Diana remained close friends after the chance encounter. It turns out dancing wasn't so foreign to the princess. She had dreamed of becoming a ballerina herself. As Pop Sugar reported, she'd fallen in love with ballet as a child and had hoped to dance professionally as a career. However, she eventually reached a height of 5 foot 10, which was considered too tall. Nevertheless, the princess continued to take dance lessons even after marrying into the royal family. Her ballet teacher, Anne Allen, said, Over time, as we went through our dance class, I realized just how much dance meant to her. She had dance in her soul. One seriously surprising fact about Princess Diana may come as a shock. The royal never officially graduated from high school. In fact, most of her school life was pretty unusual. According to the Washington Post, Diana was initially homeschooled by a governess before attending West Heath School in Kent. As Yahoo News reported, the princess made the decision to leave school at 16 after failing her O-levels twice, instead opting to attend a finishing school in Switzerland. While Diana may not have been academically gifted, she did show particular talent in the arts. She even won an award for being an extremely helpful student for her school and classmates, according to her official biography. Even though Diana didn't finish school, she made an effort when it came to her children's education. In fact, she ensured that, unlike previous royals, her sons were educated in the school system. It turns out Princess Diana had a bit of a wild side. In one of her bolder moments, Diana reportedly sneaked into a gay bar with her friend Freddie Mercury, the lead singer of Queen. As actress Cleo Roccos revealed in her memoir, she, Mercury and Diana had been close friends in the 80s. One evening, the trio had been hanging out. When Diana found out the other two were going out to the famous Royal Vauxhall Tavern, she asked if she could join them. Apparently, Roccos and Mercury were a little nervous about taking Diana to the well-known gay bar with Rocco's writing, we pleaded, what would be the headline if you were caught in a gay bar brawl? However, Diana was determined and dressed up in an army jacket, aviators and a cap, apparently passing for a gay male model. As Rocco's tells it, the three friends managed to spend an evening at the gay bar without being spotted. Princess Diana's gay bar venture wasn't the only time she sneaked out of the palace to have a little fun. Apparently, she also ducked out to a bar with her friend and soon-to-be sister-in-law, Sarah Ferguson. Sarah, who married Prince Andrew, reportedly joined Diana in trying to crash Andrew's stag party. As Diana's biographer, Andrew Morton, wrote in Diana, Her True Story, the pair dressed up as policewomen in an attempt to sneak into the party. When that failed, Morton said, The two friends drank champagne and orange juice at Annabelle's nightclub before before returning to Buckingham Palace, where they stopped Andrew's car at the entrance as he returned home. At the time, the two women were mistaken for kissogram girls at the nightclub thanks to their bizarre costumes. Louis Louis, the manager of the nightclub, told the Associated Press, They were perfectly disguised and certainly had us fooled. Apparently, they even got thrown in a police van at one point during the evening until someone recognized Diana. It turns out Princess Diana didn't mind throwing convention out the window. According to Marie Claire, Diana was a true royal trailblazer when it came to the birth of her sons. The royals of the past had given birth by having the baby pulled out with forceps while the mother was under anaesthetic. Diana, however, was apparently not so keen on this tradition. In fact, she not only gave birth fully awake, she also gave birth standing up. As childbirth expert Sheila Kitzinger explained, it was the first active royal birth, a complete contrast to the Queen's. Apparently, Prince Charles was even present at the birth and helped to support his wife. Diana also chose to give birth at St Mary's Hospital rather than at home. This started a brand new royal tradition, with Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton following in her footsteps. In The Crown, Princess Diana was shown surprising Prince Charles with a dance to Billy Joel's Uptown Girl with dancer Wayne Sleep. It turns out this unusual performance really did happen. Apparently, the performance was supposed to be a present, but Charles wasn't too keen on the performance. As Sleep recalled, the entire audience was astonished to see her up on stage. He recalled that at the time, she refused to bow to the royal box before the dance, saying, I'm not bowing to him, he's my hubby. Even though Diana's infamous performance wasn't a hit with her husband, it's gone down in legend. And, by all accounts, the dance was pretty spectacular, despite even Sleep's down.
Princess Diana wants to talk to you on the phone. So I said, hello. She said, well, I'm Wednesday. I want to dance with you. And I thought, my God, um, she's too tall. As Sleep recalled to The Guardian, the routine had a bit of everything. Jazz, ballet, even a kick line. At one point, I pirouetted and she pushed me down. Then I carried her across the stage. Long into her adulthood, Diana is said to have kept stuffed animals in her bedroom. According to the ABC documentary The Story of Diana, her stuffed animals had been with her for a long time. When Diana was just six, her mother left the family and her father became inattentive. As Vogue put it, her family was her 20 stuffed animals. It seemed that everyone who came across Diana's slightly bizarre collection of toys couldn't help but notice it. James Hewitt, who had an affair with Diana during her marriage, once said, She had 30 childhood cuddly toys lined the end of her bed. Even though Princess Diana was largely a target of gossip and tabloid speculation, during her time as part of the royal family, she made some significant contributions to the charities and organizations she supported. One of her main causes was supporting the Mines Advisory Group in their bid to create a global ban on landmines. Throughout 1997, Diana was closely involved with the organization. She even acted as a keynote speaker at one of their events. Lou McGrath, one of the group's founders, told the BBC, It was tremendous important to have her on board. It was a turning point. Just a few months after Diana's tragic death, the group's campaign was shown to be successful, as 122 governments pledged to stop using landmines. The group even won a Nobel Prize that year. As McGrath explained, Diana's help had been controversial, but without it, the group wouldn't have been nearly as effective. Aside from everything else, this Nobel Prize-winning campaign is quite the legacy for the princess. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more list videos about your favorite royals are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.